record on this computer. All right, good afternoon. It's 1220. It's time for our afternoon writing lesson. We are in the third week of writing our personal narrative. This is our week for revising and editing. On Monday, we practiced rereading with lenses. If you have not seen that assignment, make sure you go into your homeroom and click resources, scroll down to writing and watch that lesson. On Tuesday, we we worked on finishing our story and continuing to reread it to make sure it made sense. Um, today is Wednesday. This is our last big lesson of the unit. Today, what I'm going to talk about is editing and editing specifically for paragraphs, commas, and quotation marks. So let me share my screen and give you a simple version of when we do those things. Here is my screen, and I have made a Google Doc with some final editing lenses. Paragraphs. So when you look in a book, and I'm just going to grab a book right now. Here we go. And I'm going to stop my share for a minute. When you look in a book, let me spotlight my screen for the recording. And you look at the way, these are called the margins on the side of the page. You will notice that this left margin on the side of the page is not just a solid block of writing. It has these little places where it goes in. We call those, does anybody know? Indents, right? We indent our paragraphs to show when you have a new paragraph. And there's a lot of them. And the best way to learn about paragraphs, honestly, is to study your book and see when they went in. You're gonna notice that a lot of times the place that they go in, that they indent and start a new paragraph is when there's talking. And I'm gonna to explain to you how that works. It's a little bit tricky, frankly, but what you really need to become when you're reading is you need to become a person who studies the text. You'll notice there's indents all along here, at least three or four or five of them. I can't tell you how many times I've been given a, 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 a final narrative story that has no indents, no paragraphs. There's two ways to do paragraphs. One is to do it like this where you indent. Another one is called a block paragraph style where you just leave a line between and then they all stay the same. I prefer the indent style where you actually click tab and go in a few blocks. Um, let me go back to sharing my screen and show you when you make a paragraph. I use the acronym SPIT because it's easy to remember. When you wanna make a paragraph, you need to SPIT. Nobody spit right now though. Spit stands for S, speaker, P, place, I, idea, and T, time. Paragraphs show a change. They show something new, okay? Or a change. It's not just new, but a change. So what changes? Well, every time you change who's speaking, and let me say that again, every time you change who's speaking, you need a new paragraph. So if you're having a conversation, each time it changes, let's say you're talking, like I'm talking to you and I say, hi, how are you? And you answer back, I'm fine. Want to go to the store? And then I say, sure. Every time it changes from me to you, you to me, I have to have a new paragraph. I indent here and start. Mom, can I go out? I asked. Indent again. Sure, she answered because now it's her talking. Then it's me again. So I got to do it again, a new paragraph. Okay, see you later, I replied, running out the door to play. So when I am doing um, conversations with a lot of dialogue, every time we change from one speaker to another speaker, you must have a new paragraph. You need to indent and put your quotation marks. The next time that you change um, something in a story is a place. Let's say you're in the kitchen and then you say, then we went in the car to go to the store. That's a change of place, isn't it? It's a new place in the story. You might say, I was inside, then I went out to ride my bike. That's a different place. You're gonna need to indent and make a new paragraph. A third time that you make a new paragraph is with a new idea. Let's say you're talking about frogs and you're talking about their habitat or where they live. And then you decide you're gonna talk a little bit about frogs' bodies and their adaptations. You're gonna to wanna to make that a new paragraph. Now, sometimes in a nonfiction book, instead of making it just indent, you'll actually make a new subheading and say frog's bodies. And, and that's still a new paragraph. It's just a different way to show it. The final time you want to make a new paragraph is when the time changes in a story. 
So you might say, I got up in the morning later that day. Well, if you're going to put later that day in, it's a new paragraph you need to end at. Okay. Earlier that morning, new time, new paragraph. Any questions about paragraphs? Anything you don't understand about paragraphs? And again, the best way to figure out paragraphs is to grab a book, open it up, and study the times that they indented and changed it. Here it's when somebody's talking, okay? But I couldn't help it. I pictured my clothesline. That's like another part of the story, a new idea. All right. So good luck with doing paragraphs. I expect to see paragraphs in everybody's work. Um, you need to change your name back, whoever has changed their name to Rainway, so that I can answer your question. What is your question? Thanks, Christian. What's your question? It's about, it's about math, but... Oh, okay. Then you can ask me later. Remember how at 11 o'clock you could have come in and asked me a math question? So you might have to you might have to ask me after class okay um all right let's go on and talk a little bit about commas uh you might have already learned about commas i'm not sure but commas go in where you would normally take a breath when you're reading so if i pick up a book and i start reading bertha kept telling me i should invite some of my old friends from raleigh to visit me that summer and then there's an end mark i didn't want to hurt her feelings <sighs> Oh, I took a breath. I should probably have a comma in there. So it has to do with how you chunk words together and where you put a comma. There are some clues to help you know where to put commas. For example, when you have an introduction in your story, like first of all, earlier that day, after that, you always have a comma, okay? When you have a list in a story, you separate the items in the list with commas. I bought bread, comma, meat, comma, and vegetables. You don't have to put a comma after the and of whatever. The and goes at the last one. If you have quotation marks, you always have to use commas during those. Hey, wait, comma, quotation marks, I said, comma, quotation marks, I was using that. So the commas are to separate the, um, the tags that tell who's talking from the talk itself. They're also, if you're saying something, you're saying part of it and then interrupting it and saying it again, you need those commas there. Commas are also a little tricky, but the best way to learn them is to look in a book. This feels good, comma, I said. Hook pinkies, comma, I said, comma, we both get to wish. Okay, any question about commas? All right. I would like to see at least five commas in your story. So make a note that you're going to add commas. So your job today, and I'm gonna share one more time, is to add paragraphs. If you don't have them already, you need to add paragraphs to your story. I'm gonna make that big. You need to add commas to your story. And if it were me, I'd be writing these things down so I remember to add them. Ooh, that's really big. Let's not go quite that big. And you need to add, if you can, figurative language. Now we already had a lesson on this and I'm not sure if you'll remember it or not, but you probably will because you guys are very clever. Figurative language are things like similes that use like or as to compare. Oh, sorry. So, if you said, I'm as gentle as a lamb, that's a simile, okay? You might use um, hyperbole. That's when you exaggerate. I was freezing to death, <laughs> right? You might use um, personification. Does anybody remember what that one was? That's when you give something that's not a person, some attributes or characteristics that's like a person. I wrote so much, my pen was tired. I wrote so much, my pen was tired, okay? So that's personification where you give it, you give a non-person characteristics of a person. 
All right. I'm going to share this little document with you so you can remember to add these things to your story. You're just going to be able to view it, but that's okay. I will put it into the chat. Then I'm going to make breakout rooms. Then you are going to work on finishing your stories today. So let me put that in the chat to everyone. Uh, there we go. And then um, if you have a question, stay in the main room with me. Um, otherwise, I'd like to see everybody in breakout rooms. I'd like to make sure you've uh, shared your document with me. So I will be checking to see if all of you have shared a document. If you haven't, I'm going to come in your room and say, please make a document right now and share it with me. If you have a question, stay in here with me.